Oh, and the princess gets kidnapped. Right away. Like right, right away. Right at the fucking beginning of the goddamn game. Okay, all right. I can see what this is going to be like already. Yeah. Four seconds in. Four Great. seconds in. That is the only use she has for building the, the narrative of the, the main male character. Now, you can see, once again, we have the blue male character and the pink female character with a bow in her hair. Yeah. I mean, how else would we know what their gender was? Which, by the way, is super important, knowing what their gender is, of course, because the whole story depends on that. And, of course, how else we would we know? Because the only qualities, they don't have any qualities other than, you know, their very distinctive ones, pink versus blue. It's always about our differences. Yeah, already, is, I'm you, sorry. You, already, you are the only one who can save Princess Lala. Notice, notice how it stokes the ego of the male character. You, no one else can accomplish this. Mm, no, and yeah. uh, you'd have to, you have to have these uh, distinct gender demarcations by color because otherwise they're just a race of furry testicle people, which again uh, mm. is is an anti-woman message right out there in the open. They're all just a race of testicles of just testicle people. Yeah, for... I mean, God forbid they should be equal in any way, shape, or form. And since they already kind of appear like to look the same, they have to make some sort of obvious distinction between the two so we can decide who the dominant one is and who the one that always needs to be rescued is. Right? Well, well the pink one, obviously, always needs to be rescued. I mean, this is this is just... It's so much worse than Ice Climber. I, I when, we, when we did Ice Climber, I thought that that was as bad as it could possibly get. Yeah, well, I mean, I'd mentioned uh, to my therapist recently that we were uh, doing this project. Um, she suggested that I didn't continue because she saw upset. I told her all about Ice Climber. Uh, we kind of shared a little cry together, and she now I've got a therapy animal. So we're going to see. Uh, it's a collie. We're going to see if this whole little therapy regimen I'm doing now can get me through this project. So fingers crossed with that. I don't know why, but when you said you had a therapist, in my mind's eye, anytime someone tells me that they have a therapist, I just envision the therapist from The Sopranos. Right, yeah. And if yeah. it was her, you know, she was, you know, sexually assaulted in the series by the fast food worker. <laughs> right. Know, I, I mean, I, if, if it, it's a good thing that it isn't her, because I'm sure that your, your stories about Ice Climber would just bring back all kinds of traumatic memories for her. Yeah. Let's see here. So rescuing uh, our damsel in distress in this game, what does that entail? I mean, uh, he's in this castle, right? Yeah. Owned by another male, I would imagine, because yeah, they the, the don't great... want own property, yeah. I would say. Yeah. yeah. Got it. And basically, the female is just more property in the eyes of both characters involved. So really, we have two villains sort of battling over the property that is a woman. Yep. Now, you'll notice that his primary method of combat is so unspeakably sadistic. He, he fires out a spell that traps them in an egg. And mm -hmm. they're inside there just screaming and gasping for air and clawing at the, the surface of the egg. Uh, and that's before he finally just kills them. Completely. Right, so it's a little bit of torture, sort of to get off, I guess, before yeah. the actual kill. It's completely unnecessary. He could actually better use his time focusing on how to at least kill them all simultaneously, but instead he decides consciously, let's take a little bit of time out and just actively torture them as well. The uh, the male character, his... Oh, did, I, I don't know if you knew this. Uh, originally, this was planned to be a, a two-player game, not unlike Ice Claimer climber uh it, it, it wouldn't be on the same screen because of course this is uh this game promotes the segregation of the sexes right mm -hmm. Everybody, but but it would have it was originally envisioned it was originally envisioned to be a split screen uh cooperative mode but the first player the male uh, blue character lolo uh he he's very empowered he explores he gets out he has a life outside of the house he fights uh he solves puzzles he's very intelligent and capable uh, mm. The second player, the pink Lala character, her game mode just consisted of being repeatedly violated by the Demon King, and uh, you could mash the directional buttons and the A and B button, but it just it, to scream for help and and try to escape, but it just didn't it wouldn't make any difference. Yeah, it didn't you see really how matter. much larger I mean, the yeah. Another thing you'll notice is that uh, in in this world, Lolo by using magic can create eggs. 
So you have a world in which a male can create eggs, and therefore the female really isn't necessary for reproduction at all. Okay, right. Which so, is uh, sort of stresses your point from earlier that the only possible role that this female character could have is just to be the subject of abuse and violations of numerous kinds. Because yeah, or and, and as a trophy. I you know, I don't think he. I don't think yeah, he that too. All. I don't I don't get the sense at all, looking at his cold, dead, emotionless eyes. Uh, that he cares about her one bit as a person. I don't think she he enjoys her company. This is all him in this extended dick measuring contest with the Demon King. Mm-hmm. And, and look how he, happy he is every time he he doesn't he's not even thinking about her. He's not thinking about the dangers. Look, he's jumping up and down. He has a little uh, anime squinting expression. He's just so pleased with himself. Right. He, right. he doesn't and, give a fuck. Yeah, and it's kind of like that's true, and it's kind of like. Uh, the Demon King could do that thing that parents do when a, a goldfish dies and just replace her with another look-alike, and he wouldn't even notice. Um, but he would probably still discard her as well. It, it's it's really saddening to know that I grew up playing this kind of shit, day in, day out, and my parents just sort of passively allowed this to happen to me. So Your that's parents were monsters. So. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, essentially, that d- giant hand that comes down and grabs the princess and flings her into the the uh, castle across the way. That's that she brought that on herself by uh, you know being too pink. Maybe she. She. Well, yeah. Just because she walks around completely nude, she. You and know, they're pink. gonna say, okay, well, you know, she was dressed provocatively. That's a parallel this game shares with our reality, which is. Uh, public male nudity. Men walk around with their shirts off and their chest flailing uh, all yeah. the time. Nobody says a word. Woman takes her shirt off. It's disgusting. And she has to cover it up. Yeah. I mean, it's probably the same. probably to breastfeed. And she's now, kept t- door. A, if you take a look at these enemies right here, these are Medusas. Mm. Uh, if one of them sees you, they kill you just by looking at you. Oh, that's interesting. That is as interesting as it is appalling. Yeah. Furthermore, the other thing you'll notice is that they're completely stationary. They're rooted in the ground, made to stay in the kitchen and uh, and stare people to death. I mean, I have to say this: not since Dwight Yoakam's character in Sling Blade have I ever hated a character in fiction as much as I hate this low, low asshole. Oh wow! Well, I mean, he's just such a despicable <laughs> bastard. That's a statement. <clears throat> And just, I'm not sure if you know, how many floors are there to this guy's castle? That's another interesting question. I mean, how, how rich and powerful is this guy he's going up against? His, his house is far larger than anyone would really need. Um, yeah. I, I think that the money used to build this castle could probably, uh, it could probably house any number of, of poor, struggling citizens of Eggland. Yeah, or at least uh, you know one citizen per every innocent creature being slaughtered in this fucking madhouse. Yeah. Look, look at—he thinks he's just so fucking smart. Mm-hmm. He probably studied a STEM field that was completely off limits to mm-hmm. the female students at the mm-hmm. Egger Kingdom Royal College. Well, several, several, probably. Yeah. I mean, in an environment like this, yeah, several. He was permitted to study higher math and problem solving and how mm. to navigate uh, a maze like this mm. while all the women just studied home economics that and a few healthy doses of hunting with dad turned him into this asshole yeah oh yeah yeah uh, there you go congratulations asshole there you go one more fucking obstacle cleared yeah it's like with every floor this guy climbs the more i hate him yeah and and what's really sad is once he uh, finds his way to the quote unquote princess, um, she will be just overwhelmed with gratitude. Yeah, of overwhelmed with gratitude that yeah. she gets to go back um, to wherever the hell this asshole lives, probably in an equally large, you know, sort of extension of his cot kind of house like this castle is. Yeah. And just to be abused and and objectified and treated poorly, but she'll be excited and yeah. grateful. Grateful. Yeah. She she'll have been conditioned to think that she owes him. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, look at that. Oh, he's so clever. We're supposed mm-hmm. to just bow down before his superior intellect as he outsmarts a woman who is planted in the ground and literally can't even fucking move. That yeah, that's another interesting thing is that uh, 
he, he's sort of being congratulated, you know, by defeating someone who can't even compete on the on a level playing field. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, women can't actually compete on a level playing field. Tough shit. Now let's all just thrust accolades upon this asshole for being able to defeat them. Could you not use the word thrust, please? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I keep forgetting about that. I'm working on that, by the way. So, something else I've just now noticed. The prize for this guy, a pink chest. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so... There, again, the chest, the prize at the end of every floor is, again, it's equated to the prize at the end of the game, the and, woman. And it wipes out, just with a touch, whole ethnic groups. Ah. Skeletons, wow. Medusas, it just kills them all in the blink of an eye. Subtle, subtle, yeah. but yeah, I got it. I, I think that the uh, the pilots of the uh, Enola Gay uh, were, made, were played an early version of this game, and they were just conditioned not to think about all of the lives that they were ending just from one moment to the next yeah it does seem like a like a, a sort of a board game that could be constructed where a similar goal is in mind yeah hey uh what what would they have called that plane uh, if it had dropped a biological instead of a nuclear weapon huh the ebola gay One thing, uh, one thing I'm noticing, and I don't know if I'm just imagining this or if the the person playing this monstrosity is just really good at it and practiced at it, but the puzzles really don't seem to be getting that much more difficult. Um, again, I don't know how much of this game you have to play before you actually get the your your prize at the end, your princess, which I don't know why they call her that. Um, but it doesn't seem like the obstacles are much more difficult than the ones that are, were previous to that. I mean, it just seems like it's the, more of the same old shit and the same old shit, and he'll just mindlessly go through it because he's just trying to impress everyone. Right? I mean, it, it just doesn't seem like a... I guess the Demon King's not too clever either. I mean... Sarahan, did you know that even though half of the half of the students enrolled in the Eggerland colleges are female only 17 percent of them are castle and labyrinth explorers hmm yeah this again yeah Mm. and they get paid much less for the same exact work Mm. Uh, often the women don't even uh feel the need to just annihilate everyone uh before they go on to the next level of their labyrinth and and they're actually punished for it they're they're punished for their compassion Mm. And again, like I've said before, I'm sure that 60% of them, at least, would like would like to be. They would like to be labyrinth explorers. I mean, considering like how many of them get kidnapped and taken to such places, it yeah, would be you a would useful imagine. skill to know how to escape from them. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. But alas, once again, they're not allowed. Mm-hmm. They want them all to be little Medusas. Just stay where you're yeah. supposed to be, and that's it. You're, you're a distraction. You're a mere distraction and an obstacle. Even, even more than that, an obstacle. For men, and yeah. that's pretty much it. So. I mean, there's always a man who's trying to get a, a more interesting woman than you, a more attractive woman than you, something more suitable for him. Many of you don't fit that criteria, so you're just stationary obstacles in his way, basically. Um, and that includes the college environment. Right, I mean, women uh, on campuses are a little more than distractions for men who are trying to actually accomplish uh, goals that are meaningful, whereas uh, women are sort of taking up space and distracting all of the, the serious students, a.k.a. people with penises. The, the other thing I find very negative about this game, I mean, there's a whole host of things, but yeah, when you look at the, the females uh, of this race, how they're just perfectly round, uh, and pink, there, there's just no way that young girls in our society can ever hope to match that sort of body type. Well, no, and, and the message is, you know, the message is more about perfection. Yeah. About um, this is the way men look, and I think in this game, the appearance of the male is more of a projection of what the male expects. Yeah. It's not, it's, it's probably not even his physical appearance. It's a projection of... This is what I want. This is what you should look like. And, of course, the female falls in line and looks exactly 
like what the male expects her to look like. Again, all other women in the game who don't look that way, they're not being fought for. They're being destroyed. Yeah, they're enemies. Murdered, right, absolutely. Again, just stationary obstacles, just just taking up space and distracting and even harming men who are trying to accomplish something worth accomplishing. Fucking disgusting. Okay, so now here he's making sure that he's perfectly safe and can go without... Without any danger, without any harm, he uh, traps all his enemies in and, and then slowly walks through the sand, swaggering mm-hmm. as he heads towards the device that Strutting, will end. Strutting, sort of like a, a strut, like yeah. a man strut. Yeah, Yeah. The, the person who played this looks like they, they really do uh, know what they're doing. They, they've not really made a single mistake. Uh, they, mm-hmm. I mean, they, let's face it, they play this game all the time, uh, mm-hmm. and, and they just... Uh, they just sit there and play this game and touch themselves thinking about Lala being violated by the great devil. Yeah. That, and the fact that they, they're not thinking at all. Like you said, I mean, this is none of this means anything. It's just, uh, images, lips on a screen. It doesn't mean anything to them. Um, all the while the, the game is sort of, uh, educating them on what, uh, what society would be like in another 20, 25 years, right? This is the kind of male we expect you to be. And I'm quite certain this guy is definitely a model citizen, as they would have had him. Yeah, uh, it's it's just too rich, like you said, too rich chauvinistic males. And uh, what was that? Is it My Fair Lady, where the two the two rich guys make a bet that they can uh, turn an ordinary uh, you know, poor girl into a lady of, uh, of refinement. Is that, am I thinking the right thing? Um, I don't know. I'm right. not sure. But what, what, regardless, it, it's the same exact thing, except instead of them saying, well, you know, I'll, I'll make you a wager, fellow rich, white, uh, cis male. Mm-hmm. I'll make you a wager that I can turn this, uh, ordinary, uh, uh, you know, what is it? in some versions of the story, it's a prostitute and others, it's just uh, some poor girl, uh, mm-hmm. some working class mm-hmm. girl who's just trying to make her way. And he says, well, I bet I can make her into a lady of refinement and a, a walking stereotype of, 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 sh- of a sheltered, disempowered uh, woman who knows her place and, and knows the, the artificial etiquette that we have hoisted upon them, right? Right. Yeah. This is just a variation of that very story, except instead of saying I can turn her into a lady, it's like, well, I bet uh, I bet I could, you know, he's like, I hey, bet Lo- I hey, Lola, yeah, yeah, hey, Lola, I bet I can turn the princess into a sexual assault victim. And, or he just says, yeah, you're on, and he just carelessly accepts the, that, and, uh, and that brings us right. to the current situation. I mean, this is, he's, he's as culpable as the... As the, the Easily, and because I'm quite sure that the, the female involved here has no idea of their little game whatsoever. Yeah. She's, just a, she's just the object in the game. She's just the pawn in the game. That's oh, it. Here, here it is. And this is the S, this is the rich S, and he's got her in the palm of his hand. Oh, Notice shit. Her. Fucking oh. wrecked. Oh, wow. Fucking now, wrecked. Now, she's petrified. Something yeah. terrible has obviously just happened to her, right? Which is interesting because you would have to assume she's been violent. And, and now the they're chauvinistic in love. winking. And now, Well, now they're in love. Look at that. One moment ago, only a second ago, she was utterly traumatized by this asshole. And the mere presence of this other asshole is enough to send her head over heels in love once again? Yeah. In a, at a second's notice? Ah, oh, man. Well, I'm going to be sick, so there's that. Here's the trees growing back for some reason. Suddenly what, all the yeah, dead- yeah, everything that he strived to kill is now springing. Oh, I know what this is. This is everything springing back to life so they could start over again. I, I think it's just a, a bunch of uh, climate change denialists saying, don't worry about carbon emissions. Uh, carbon is good for trees. Just keep killing and destroying and advancing your own position higher right. and higher. Everything will be fine. Everything will grow back. And that's the end. Yeah, that's a really interesting one. And that is the end of yet one more horrifying tale. And I'm going to be sick. So thanks for this again. And so concludes The Adventures of Lolo, a sickening piece of patriarchal propaganda which shamelessly promotes blue cis male supremacy, simultaneously vilifying women while endorsing genocide, as each level finishes with the player plucking an ovary of mass destruction from a pink treasure chest. 
we give this game a final misogyny rating of three and a half Ray Rices out of five.